Hi everybody, welcome to uh, Lazy Devs Academy, welcome to our PQA tutorial. I took a small break. I recorded a lot of videos in one day, or just a couple of days. Then I had a bunch of work to do. Today I have like one day to do a couple of videos and then I'm off to the races again, like doing stuff on a weekend. So mm, it's gonna be a bit, um, a bit, a bit close, but there's a lot of things to do. You've been commenting on my videos and I've been really excited. It's really great to have like a, so, so many smart people like going over my code and like, ah, ah, there is a thing they could, ah, mm, mm, if you do this, then, mm. and it's, it's like, it's like, it's, mm, it's delicious. So delicious. There's so many things. Look, I wrote it down and you don't see anything because it's a way, like the lightning setup is so horrible. You don't actually see like if you do. Yeah. Yeah. It's something is written on this. I swear. It's not just like a piece of paper. I'm not like Donald Trump. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, before we begin, before we get too political, um, a bunch of people ask me if there's going to be a Patreon or something that they want to like, they are really excited about the tutorial and want to give back. Uh, I do not have a Patreon. I might start a Patreon maybe soon in the future when I decide, when I have an idea that, um, or if I realize, or if I can verify that I can actually release content on a regular basis. Because I think like from the past <laughs> Patreon experiences, it's always a bit sad. If you run a Patreon, you know, the first month is great, second month is great. And then like peter out and then you do nothing. And then you feel bad because people are expecting stuff from you. So I want to make sure that I can actually sustain, you know, uh, sustain a certain amount of output over a longer period of time. So I don't feel bad about doing a Patreon. However, there is a Kofi out. So if you want to donate a coffee to me, then you can uh, certainly do so. The link will be down in doubly do. But I also did another thing here that you can try out, which is Ta -da! <laughs> so I printed a bunch of t-shirts. And so you can get a, this t-shirt here, that's gonna be the Lazy Desk Academy t-shirt. If you want that, you can, uh, there's gonna be also a link in the doobly-doo. And also the t-shirt that I had the last time around, that was the token limit t-shirt, you can get that as well. And all of the, of course, a, bunch of, a little bit of that money that you spend on the t-shirt will go to support this channel. So if you'd like to do that, then I would be very happy. Anyways, moving on to today's today's agenda, We're going through like you know like it's like it's professional. So um, I have like a bunch of lists of things I don't notice myself and other people noticed, and we're gonna go through that list and we're gonna see if uh, if we can save a token here and there, maybe do things a little bit more efficiently. So yeah, let's let's do that. <clears throat> so first of all, some of the tools functions that we had, they were not written efficiently. I admit, they were kind of copied from other programs and I actually didn't, didn't really pay attention to whether they are efficient or not. So um, I think there's like potential for, for to clean up a little bit to make sure that they are. Um, wait a minute, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's not here though. Uh, it was in gameplay in the line of sight function. Yeah, that had like lots of potential here. So yeah, I noticed this actually when I, while I was doing this, I was like, oh, wait, hmm, there is, hmm, I could do something here. So for example, we could um, put these into one line that kind of saves us like a token, I think. Like so, and we can put these into one line. Oops. Not a big deal, but on the other hand, as I said, we're not gonna actually, um, like do anything with this function, so it's fine. Like um, we're not gonna actually modify this a lot. This is just like you know uh, we got all we that we need from this function, so we can like we can afford to compress compress it so it becomes a bit less readable. But on the other hand, um, it kind of like it doesn't get in the way from the other functions that are might be actually more interesting. We can leave out this nil. Uh, that also helped a little bit. Then here is something also that we can merge. Oops. And this might be even better to do R plus um, plus equals, but I don't know. It's it's fine. It's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not sure if that what's what's more efficient. Maybe we should try it. Let's try it. Okay, I'm down with trying it. So, so this, the original is going to be two, three, 
to six. There's a lot of tokens, or by the way. And so if you do it like this, plus equals dx, that's gonna be two, three, two, four, just two tokens saved. And if you do it like this, Uh, 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 like so that's better uh, worse I mean so let's let's go let's go for for this so um, plus equals DX that's probably gonna be the best so let's let's do it here as well um, so this is gonna be minus equals DY Gotta watch out not to lose my my handle on on those things because uh, if if I screw this up, <laughs> I might not be able to reproduce this function. This is gonna be fun. Okay, so um, yeah, we cannot deal with these things because it seems like yeah, yeah, these are not referencing the same variable, so we cannot do this plus minus stuff here. Okay, so um, I think R plus R. Why does it say R plus R? Shouldn't be like R times two. Am I, am I taking crazy pills? Yeah, it's R times two. I, I guess it doesn't save any tokens, right? Two, three. Yeah, it's the same. Okay, let's just leave it as it is then. Uh, but we could. Go like this. Um, what are us? What are us? So yeah, that's something I noticed, but also Tobias pointed out this part that, that this, this could um, could use some um, some tweaking. So thank you so much for, for pointing this out, Tobias. That's great. Good. Uh-huh. Okay, so now another thing that we want to be fixing here in the mobs function, I don't know, I, it's not a, like, a, like a big thing, but um, I, I remember how I like went through this function and made sure that it's not mob but it's MB because this is a local uh, variable. So it shouldn't, it's not a good idea to kind of make a, conf make a conflict between this local variable and um, then this uh, public variable called just mob, uh, this, this, this array here. So just to make sure that we're not con making conflict, I, conflict there, I call this local variable MB instead of mob, but I forgot that I'm doing this uh, as well down here. So let's, let's do that. Let's fix that real quick. MB, 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 and then here as well. Now I wonder if here's like this <clears throat> one minus AT, I wonder if is using a local variable will actually save us some, some tokens here, two, three, two, two. So let's try that, time equals uh, one minus AT. And if we go AT here, at and time I'm mean. Yeah, we saved a token, so that's great. Good, good, good. Things are progressing at a good pace. So another little fix here is in do fade. Let's go do fade. There is an uh, brackets that we don't need because multiplication comes before addition, so we don't need those brackets. Um, do we de need these brackets though because there is a plus here and we need that plus needs to happen before the division so we cannot remove those brackets anymore so I guess that's like one token fixed just making sure that the game is still running and there is no big major malfunctions but it seems, seems okay die so far so good now the move player function has something that 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 where we can fix something there's a double equals sign yeah this equals false we can remove that we're gonna just go if mob then no wait if not mob um we could yeah we could just fix, switch this around so if mob then do the thing and if not mob then not do the thing that 
that's probably the most efficient way of doing this. So if there is a mob, then hit the mob. And if there is no mob, then uh, see if there's maybe something that you can trigger. What's the idea here? Good. Another thing we can fix is here in the UI in a window duration. Um, let me see. So first of all, if window duration is not equals nil, well, that's you can just say if windows duration, right? So because if it's worth is if, if the value is set to something, then that will pass. <clears throat> and um, what else can we do here? Um, I don't think anything is. I wrote down something here, but actually we 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 actually removed it already, so it's actually no longer here. Here, here could we could have done something, but apparently we cannot do that anymore. All right. There is a little detail here where we could do um, solve this differently by making it not dependent on the height of the window, but on the difference. <clears throat> but um, I'm I'm thinking like this is actually better because this actually. Um, when the window is actually smaller than a certain amount of, of pixels, then it actually disappears. I think that's actually what we want to, want to be having. Uh, by the way, this is something that Tobias suggested. So thank you, for, Tobias, for pointing this stuff out. Another thing here in gameplay is we can... Um, uh, let's see, if we're gonna go to the getMob function... No, 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 not here, but some somewhere. Oh, it's it's walkable here. So return get mob equals false. We can simplify this by saying not get mob. So that will save us a bunch of tokens here, um, because um, because we are not like the equal sign and stuff like that that costs a bunch of extra tokens. And let's see if we can like. So we have like fifteen now. What happens if we go if not f get? Yeah, that's going to be a one token. So like equals equals true or false is generally like a bad situation. You want to be avoiding that. And if you can, and make sure that um, that using not and, and stuff like that. Stuff like that. So yeah, thank you for Apace, Apace, Apace for pointing that out. Thank you so much. So another thing this, um, that we can talk about is right here. So while we're here, we can maybe discuss this. So there is a certain type of expression that is kind of like pretty advanced, I would say. Um, it's kind of like um, different languages have this this uh, this way of putting things into, into code. Certain languages don't have it. Uh, typically, actually, Lua doesn't have it, um, but you can kind of make a kind of like a pseudo code that kind of does a similar kind of thing. And I'm talking about a so-called ternary expression or term, ternary operator. Um, that basically means that equals something. Uh, so x equals uh, something. And depending on whether something is true or false. So something is true or false. You kind of say like, okay, so if something is true, then it's going to be, I don't know, four. And if something is if that thing is false in other ways, um, let's let's make it two or something like this, you know? So it's kind of like um, uh, you make like an if statement that, um, like a tiny little if statement that kind of like picks one value or the other, depending of, uh, of uh, depending on if whether something is true or false. Um, that's called a ternary. And, you know, different languages have like different ways of writing this. Um, again, Lua doesn't really have it, but you, uh, it seems like you can make it work. And the formula for this is x equals a and b or c this is the formula and you can like you should write it down somewhere i certainly did because i can never remember it it's very confusing because it uses this and and or which are boolean operators so it seems like you you have you have like a boolean statement but it's actually not a boolean statement um so x is kind of like your variable that you're assigning to a is the thing that you're checking if it's true or not uh, if it's true or false and if it's true, you do this. Um, and if it's false, you do this. So B and C are like basically Y1 and and Y2. These are kind of like these, these two statements. And A is the condition. Something like this maybe, condition uh, Y or two. Um, one or two. So this would be how you would do do kind of like this kind of stuff. So in this case, in, it's walkable. We kind of want to just make sure if something is nil, if in, and if it's nil, then we set it to some kind of value. So here's how you would do it. You'd say um, local mode 
um, let's let me see equals mode or this. It's kind of like even like a shortened thing where it's like, um, yeah, if it's if it's not that thing, you don't we don't have the um, if it's set to a certain value, it re retains that value. If it's not set to a value, it will it gets like the the default value here. So that's that's the idea. We can we can even test it out by going like debug equals mode, and that should get us test in written. Actually, it's site now because we're always checking for site. But uh, yeah, I, let's just assume it works. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was OMG Mog who suggested this. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm usually I kind of like worry about using um, ternary statements, um, and some sometimes they don't really actually save tokens, and uh, they certainly makes they make things more difficult to read. But I think I should get more. Um, you were right to suggest this because I sh I should get more familiarize myself more with with these kinds of um, writing. So there's another um, moment where you also can use a, a ternary statement, and that's um, in the flip thing. And that's something Aviv Deer, Aviv Deer, Aviv Deary, <laughs> It's a it's a tough nickname to to spell, uh, pronounce. So this is gonna be here in. Um, in the mob flip function. So again, there's like an if statement and depending on whether something is true or false, it will be true or false. So here's a ternary that we can use here instead. So it's gonna go like mb.flp uh, equals, and now comes comes the tricky part. So dy not equals zero and mb.flp or um, dx smaller than zero. So this is a bit weird because we are using these uh, like equations within an equation <laughs> or within an assignment. But this is basically if this is so what, how do we so if um, dy is set to something that that means that we're running in one direction no um, if dy is set to a certain value that means we are not running left or right in which case we want to keep that orientation that we already had um, and if dy is set to zero in this case I just want to make sure that um, this is set to dx is smaller than zero so if it's smaller than zero it's true and if it's greater than zero it's set to false um, which means we're gonna get true or false, kind of like we're gonna get um, the player flipping in one direction or another. So that's kind of kind of like a more um, better way of putting this. And we can actually go here dx equals equals zero. So if dx is set to zero, we're gonna keep the orientation otherwise not. So we don't have to actually give this function um, the dy value, we can just um, do, do the dx as a as an argument. Again, ternaries, mm, a bit tough, but but I think they're worth it. I think it's kind of like if you get like really, really proficient with them, they can uh, make things a lot more compact, a lot more uh, token efficient as well. So there's two big things that we want to be doing now. Um, one thing is, it's kind of like interesting, here in gameplay, um, I like, kind of like this idea of, the, we have the, this problem that the player is be the first mob in our mob list. And so when we draw him, he's being drawn underneath all the other mobs. And that kind of looks sometimes weird. So on a draw function, I want to go. Um, and so what I did, my solution for this was basically to kind of like this very complicated situation where, where is it, where is it, where is it here? So we draw all of the mods except of the player and then we ex uh, draw the player. That's that's awkward. And so rightfully so, um, Matthias was actually so, uh, thinking about, you know, how to make this maybe a bit more efficient. So let's see if we can like um, spice things up a little bit here or make uh, like make this a bit more, more natural. Uh, one suggestion that I heard that I really liked was to draw all of the mobs backwards. So start with a final mob entry <clears throat> in the list and just go backwards through the list. I think that's an excellent idea and um, and might actually save us this additional if statement even though the for, we have to use the for next loop um, that requires like a variable like a counter then that is less efficient than doing the for, and, for in all loop. 
but because we saved the if statement and the additional draw mob here, we might actually come on, on top when it comes to tokens. So let's try that. We're gonna go for i equals uh, hashtag mob, comma one, comma minus one, do. So going backwards through the mob uh, um, array, and then we're gonna go draw mob, mob square brackets i. Let's try that. And that means we can go, we can remove all of this stuff. We save four tokens that way, yes. <laughs> okay, so let's see if this even works. I wanna have some interaction with a, with a, with a character. Yep. Uh, well, I didn't see too much, but it seems like it was okay. Maybe we find a second one, yeah, let's see. I think it's good. And also I'm, I can look left and right, so that's also good. Now comes the most difficult addition. So um, the thing that we want to be changing here, there's like two big changes to the way animations work that I think are due. One is we're still doing this AT um, or like this PT variable that, that we're always using, this variable here. Remember I had like this variable that was called PT for like player timer uh, to kind of like time the animation of the player. And then later on we realized, uh, where's the PT? I'm looking for it. <laughs> I want to show you the PT. Where's the PT? God damn it, where is it? Where are you? I think it was here. No, not add mob, mob AI. Um, there we go, PT, this variable. So we, uh, it used to be the player timing variable and it used to control the animation of the player animation. And then um, I wanted to keep it around because then later on maybe you would have like uh, enemies and they would have their own timer. Well, we realized that actually uh, the animation of the player and animation of the enemies are it's not actually happening simultaneously. So there's no reason for the enemies to have like their own timer. We can actually reuse the PT. But that also means that we kind of don't need, um, don't need a lot of things. First of all, we don't need to um, give all of those animation functions. Uh, let me see, where, where are they? Uh, for example, morph walk or morph bump. They always need like a timer, animation timer, um, argument. We don't need that animation timer argument if we're just going to keep using this global variable here. So we can just leave it out and we're going to just use directly PT in those situations. So that's, that will kind of like uh, speed up things a little bit. Um, just want to make sure that we are, when we're actually doing the animation that we're, in, that we're not giving the PT as an argument. So let me see where that is. I think that was an uh, update function. Um, 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 there we go here. We don't need that anymore. And we don't need that anymore. So that should, should do it. Oh, there is a problem here. Um, there is a T is nil. There was a nil happening. All right, yeah. That should be an AT, uh, BT. Okay. Actually, if I look at this, this could be another ternary. Let's try that. Can we can we pull this off? A local TME equals. Now it comes the thing that we're checking for this, and one minus P T or um, P T like this and we don't need this stuff anymore. I think we saved a bunch of stuff here. Right, right. Let's try. Yep, it's, it's working. Good, looks good. So um, the next part is gonna be even more, like it's still working on the same thing. So we still kind of have like this MB, that's kind of like the, um, that's the mob that is supposed to be animated. But if you think about it, every time uh, we do this, we actually, what we actually do is we saving this function inside a variable inside an object. 
And a function that's inside an object, that's called a method. Um, so this kind of like you're going, going to really deep into object oriented programming or that's kind of like a fundamental of object oriented programming. Generally objects have uh, properties and methods and properties are something like this where it's like just a bunch of variables that have like um, um, values stored in them. Something like, you know, X position or like a color or uh, things like that. But um, objects also can have methods associated with them. A method is kind of like a function inside an object. And generally like the huge advantage of uh, um, object-oriented programming is that it allows you kind of like to perform operations within an object and you don't have to deal with like everything that's around. You don't need like references to the object that you're, that you're working on. You can like operate from within an object, which makes sense for something like an animation where it's really just about, I want to be moving this one object here and I don't want to be caring about anything um, um, outside of, of this object. Um, P uh, Lua doesn't really have like a very natural way of doing this, these kinds of like methods, but it does have a way. So here's how we can do this. You, we can make this function work, this um, specifically this moth bump and moth walk animation uh, function. We can both of these make them work without actually having to have a uh, argument, this MB argument here, we can make it work directly. So, but uh, warning, I never actually did this too often. So this might explode in our face. Let's try it. So the idea here is that we don't need the MB here. And instead of the MB, we can now use this. This is kind of like um, this should be this um, a reference to the object within your uh, which you're executing this function. Uh, so it kind of it refers to the object within this uh, or this method is being executed. Um, now, uh, now that we have this, we have to like execute the function in a slightly different way. And the way for, of doing this is to, again, we're going to go into the update function. So it's going to be here instead of the dot, instead of the M, we're going to go M colon math. And here is going to be colon moth, pmop colon moth. I'm skeptical. It didn't work. Ah, because there's a still an MB left over here. So let's, let's deal with that. Still. So this is a null value. How did, was this underscore this? How did that work again? Six and a half hours later. Oh, it was not this, it was self. I got it wrong, it's called self. Let's try that. Nope. Hmm. One eternity later. Oh, I got it. So you have to actually maybe add this. Let's try that. Maybe that worked. That's, that's the trick. That is that the trick? Yes, that was a trick. Okay, so <laughs> you actually have to add this kind of like holder uh, variable that is the reference to the object within your executed things into the brackets. And so so you can reference it. Okay, so now kind of like this. Oh, I'm going to make sure that if you're bumping, we're gonna still using self here. So let's see if the wall bumping works. It works. And we can open stuff up and walk around. I'm not sure if we actually save tokens this way because you kind of like still have the reference here. But I think we saved it um, in the opposite direction here where we don't have to actually put an object into the parentheses anymore because it kind of like that's something that Pico8 takes care of for us. Good. Thank you so much Tobias for pointing this out. And one, like two little details at the end that we want to be fixing here. P, any, any, we actually don't need that anymore. We are using, we're saving this into in the actual um, uh, pmob variable now. And um, now this is not going to be in uh, opti optimization. Actually, the opposite is going to be a uh, de-optimization. Um, I actually want to do one thing where we're unfogging, un unfogging stuff. Uh, that's going to be here. In the, 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 where is it? Where is it? Come on, where is it? Where is it? Gameplay. Um, it's gonna be here, unfog tile. I wanna be only unfogging tiles that are actually fogged. Um, so it's kind of like we're not unfogging un, un, 
uh, useless tiles. I mean, it doesn't have to be, it's not going to be actually token efficient, but it may, might save some some performance stuff. I noticed sometimes like the frameworks didn't look as smoothly as I, as I hoped. So just in case that this is not going to be the bottleneck, I'm going to add something like um, if um, for if not fog um, actually we, we cannot do uh, there's not a false and true so we don't go with fog um, x y equals um, one and so we're just gonna execute all of this just on those tiles that are actually already fogged so let's see how that works that looks good it's still working correctly Good, good, I'm liking what I'm seeing. All right guys, so this was it. This was kind of like a big episode of our just us like just saving a bunch of tokens. Uh, we saved some tokens, we spent some tokens <laughs> on, on the back again, but overall our things has become a lot more efficient and world more compact. And in the next episode, we're gonna return to our regular schedule program. where We're gonna actually start adding more features uh, so thank you for joining me. Uh, remember about the t-shirts and see you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.